All right, folks, welcome back. This is Bellatro 1.0. Finally, the full version of the game is available to everyone, and I invite you to come with me on a journey. I have a couple different types of content planned. Uh, we will do some of the sort of high scoring, weird challenges, and also other kind of wacky hijinks like we did in the demo version last year. There will also be you know, some kind of tutorial content as well, you know, tips and tricks and things to think about uh, to help you improve your gameplay, uh, you know, improve your success rate. But what I want to do with this series is go for completion, go for 100%. So if we go here, this is a brand new profile uh, that we're going to be using. We've got, uh, we're going to unlock all of the jokers and vouchers and decks and things like that in the collection. Uh, eventually we'll try out the challenges, see what those are like, and uh, in the end, unlocking the higher difficulty settings, these higher stakes, and getting all of the unlocks and achievements associated with those. So to kick things off here, we've just got uh, the first starter deck available to us is the red deck, and we'll just play through on the base difficulty of the white stakes. The red deck, it gives you plus one discard every round. Um, and so the way you should be thinking about this is if I have extra discards, it is easier for me to sculpt my hands. It is easier for me to find better hands. And so as we're going through, we should be thinking about what are some better hands that we can make um, and perhaps better hands that we can force to happen uh, using our extra discard. Now, you know, the red deck I know isn't super exciting, um, nor is the white stake difficulty. That's okay. The main thing that we're gonna be focusing on with this first run is going to be uh, the new jokers, the new joker content, and thinking about how those factor into the decision making. So let's give this a try and just see what we find. All right, uh, you know, first here we've got, you know, some skip tags we should also think about. Um, here, this double tag, you know, this is as good as whatever the best skip tag is going to be because it's just going to copy it. Uh, here we've got D6 tag makes your rerolls cheaper. And so if you start with cheaper rerolls, then you can look at more options in the shop. You can look at more jokers. Uh, for now, sort of early on, uh, I don't have that much money to buy more jokers, and so having the extra rerolls doesn't help me that much. Um, this double tag, I'm going to pass on for now. Uh, you know, there could be uh, a case for picking this up in the future. Uh, I'll sh the reason why I want to skip the or not take this one and just do the blind normally is, you know, you can kind of see what is a normal small blind look like. So sort of standard setup here is we need to get 300 points. And so there's a couple different ways that you can do that. Um, you know, starting with this deck of 52 cards here, you can get a high straight. So if it's queen, jack, 10, nine, eight, as long as it's eight and higher, a straight will get you this 300 points. Uh, you can also with certain flushes. So if you have a flush and the chips of your cards add up to 40 or higher. You know, for example, we've got kings give you 10, aces give you 11, uh, and then these numbered cards give you here's four and then six and then you know so on. If all of that added together adds up to 40 or higher, if we go here a flush, this would be 75 times four is how we get that 300 points. So you could get a flush or a straight, or uh, for a full house you would need 35 chips. So on average, you want your cards to be uh, seven chips each, and then that would add up to 35 total. So those are some different options that we have. So looking at this here, you know, I have all of these diamonds. I could make a flush with these diamonds by discarding here and then keeping the diamonds. But I know that here with the four and the two, that's not gonna add up to enough points to win in one hand. So, you know, a couple options. One is we could just accept that. We can just 
Okay, well, I don't need to win in one hand every time. I can just play a flush and then play something else kind of small that will give me enough points. That's perfectly valid, that's totally fine. Um, something to think about, at the end of the round, you get money for however many unused hands you have. And so if we use less hands, we get more money, and then you know, with that we can, always better to have more money. So there is some incentive, there is some pressure to maybe use as few hands as possible. And if that's the thing that I want to do, maybe what I want to do is with these nines, go for the full house. We said before the red deck gives you the extra discard. With four discards, it will be easier than on some other decks to get the full house here. So I'm going to go for the full house. A uh, couple options there. We can discard these five cards holding on to the nines, or we can choose to discard only four cards. Uh, what I'm looking for now, since I already have the three nines, I'm looking for uh, any pair. Uh, not any pair, right? It has to be, I think six or higher has to be. So if I'm looking for a pair of six or higher, if I throw away these five, you know, I could get whatever. Um, if I keep this king here, trying to draw another king to match this king, is the same as if I threw away this king, I would be trying to match whatever the five cards that I draw are. And so the probability is the same. Probability is the same whether I throw this king or whether I keep this king. Except the difference is I know this king is bigger than a six. And so, you know, instead of getting a pair that's less than a six, here I have a better chance if I keep the king. So we're gonna discard these four looking for uh, hopefully another king right away um, or any pair that's six or higher uh, For example here, we've got the aces with the nines that's going to work And then here you can see like I said with the remaining hands we get one extra dollar uh, So the difference is you know, we get six dollars here instead of five dollars here. Okay, this is interesting. Okay, so we've got the obelisk. This one was available in the January, February demo version. Um, this rewards you for not playing your most played hand. And so one way to kind of make this work is you pick it up early and then for part of your run, you play one type of hand. You play a lot of that type of hand. You may, maybe you play a lot of flushes. And then for the second half of your run, you play something else, you score with something else. So maybe you start out with flushes and then you end with uh, straight flushes or something like that. Or maybe you start out with straights, you end with straight flushes. Or maybe you start out with uh, full houses and then you end with four of a kind or something like that. Um, so, you know, we could take this. It is very powerful. You do get a huge reward for, uh, you know, the ask that it has, um, but it does kind of warp your run. Uh, you know, if we take the obelisk, okay, well now this is an obelisk run as opposed to something else. So I'll take it. I'll take it because, you know, at, at the very least it gives us kind of a strong flavor here that we can go for and then we'll just kind of see what happens. So, okay, again here, you know, we don't have a lot of money, so, you know, no sense in getting this reroll tag. Let's go ahead and take the next round. Okay, what am I looking to do here? We said uh, all of those hands that I said before, high straight, high flush, uh, high full house, those would give me the uh, 300 points, uh, you know, between 300 and 350. So here, this obelisk, is not going to give me any scoring so i need two hands to win and knowing that i need two hands to win i have a lot of options for what i can do i have a lot of flexibility there um, i think with the power of discarding among the easier safer hands to make uh, are going to be flushes so you know for example here 
If I keep these sixes and threes and I'm looking to make a full house, there's two more threes left and two more sixes left. And so there's only four possible cards that I could draw. Whereas, you know, maybe I keep these spades and then now I've got, you know, technically I've got 10 cards that I could draw. You know, that's way more than four cards that I could draw, but I do need to draw two out of those 10 is maybe still easier than drawing one out of the four. So I think, you know, flushes are relatively easy, especially on, you know, with the power, the extra discard of the red deck. So we'll do that. Two flushes, let's give that a try. And then also then, you know, we said with the obelisk, we want to try to play a lot of the same type of hand, at least at the beginning, and then at the end, play something entirely different. So let's play flushes to get those up, and then at the end, we'll play something else. So we're still looking for spades are what we want here. Almost there. Wait, did we already have it? I think we might have already had it. Uh, I wasn't paying attention. There we go. So we've got uh, a spade flush here. This is, you know, using the face cards. This is among the higher cards here. So you can see this is going to be more than the 300 points. You know, 309 or yeah, 380 almost. So we only need 70 points. We don't need much. So does a pair of nines do it? I think a pair of nines doesn't do it, but two pair would do it. Uh, here I've got options to, you know, if I keep these four and discard the rest, I have an option to maybe get a straight uh, with a six or an ace. Um, I could, you know, hold on to the nines, trying to make uh, any two pair will do it. Um, I want to try to play another flush. So if I want to try to make another flush, I have one out of four spades that I could draw. Or if I go for the clubs flush, then I need two out of the eight clubs. The difference being here, I'm discarding four cards. So I only have four chances to draw. Whereas here I'm discarding five cards. So I've got more chances. Um, I think we have a better chance going for the club flush, though it is close. Even though we have less clubs in hand right now, we have more clubs in the deck. And there we go, we're rewarded. All right, so we sort of have accepted the fact that as long as we keep playing flushes, this obelisk will, you know, continue to be not giving us anything. And so maybe something to think about is uh, how else am I going to score in the meantime? So if we look, uh, you know, here I've got plus four for all of my hearts. If the plan is to make flushes, I can go for hearts flushes, perhaps. And we don't really have any money for else, anything else. All right, so here, you know, I already have a flush if I want to play it here. If I go for the hearts flush, the plus 20 molt from the lusty joker, that will definitely give us enough to score here. So when you're doing these sort of like ad hoc uh, in the moment score calculation, score approximations, uh, the way that I kind of think about it, don't worry about trying to calculate all of the things that are involved every time. Just maybe think about sort of relative scores. So however much I scored in the previous round compared to in this round, I got a new joker. What is the new joker doing? So don't forget, forget about what all the other jokers are doing. What is the change? Focus on that. So for example, we said before with sort of a high-ish flush, you could get about 300 points, 350 points possibly. Um, and this is with a base molt of four. So if the Lusty Joker is giving us plus 20 on the hearts flush, then you know that's gonna be from four to 24, that's six times as much. 
So, you know, that's going to be 1800 points, which means with the hearts flush, not only do I know I can beat this round, I can beat all of the next three rounds. I can beat all the way through the next boss. So let's try that. Let's go for the hearts flush, just the one hand, and then that way we'll get the most possible money. Just like that. And it doesn't matter whether it's high cards or low cards because we'll get so much molt from the Lusty Joker. These uh, suit-based Joker is very powerful, giving you the plus. And then here, you know, that 1600 uh, is close to, you know, what we were approximating. So we'll keep that in mind as we go forward. Knowing that I can get 1600 from this Lusty Joker and then in the next couple rounds, like I said, I can beat the next four rounds, no problem. I'm not going to buy anything at all uh, because at the end of each round, you also get more money for each you know, dollar that you have saved up here, uh, every $5. So as long as we're you know, sitting on $11 and then higher, we'll collect interest. So I'm going to, you know, I know that I don't need to spend money to score. So I'm gonna save my money and then that's gonna give me, you know, more money to buy more later. All right, here we have another skip opportunity. We're offered this uh, ethereal tag gives us a spectral pack. Uh, spectral packs, they can show up in the shop. Um, they don't show up that often, they're somewhat rare. And so having the option to get this, uh, you know, right here, if we skip the blind, we also skip the shop. And so instead of whatever booster packs would be in the shop, we get this spectral pack and set could be worth it because of how rare spectral packs are. I'm not going to take it um, at least where we're at now. There's not anything in particular that I'm interested in getting from a spectral pack. So we'll just go into the next round here. Uh, we're also when we're skipping, not only are we skipping the opportunity to shop, we're also missing out on the reward money. So the base reward money plus the hands plus, you know, whatever interest money. So the question is, you know, is this spectral pack worth $10? And I think for now, maybe not. All right, here we've already drawn our hearts. You know, here on the red deck, I was hoping we would demonstrate the discarding power of the red deck, but uh, I guess we'll just draw it naturally. All right, uh, once again, I already have this sort of security. I already know that I'm scoring enough points, so I'm going to save all of my money for interest. And again here, now this D6 tag, this is different from the previous one. In the previous one, we didn't have any money. So if we rerolled, we wouldn't buy anything. Now, again, we have this opportunity. Okay, if we, your rerolls are cheaper, you can see more jokers in the shop and then you can potentially buy more things or buy better things. Uh, once again here, we're missing out on the reward money. We're missing out on the money from hands and the money from interest. And so is all of that extra money, you know, let's say $10 or whatever, uh, is that worth what money we would spend on rerolls? And the answer right now is no. Also, you know, every time you go into a shop, you get sort of a free reroll. You get whatever the shop offers as the first roll. And so we're also skipping that first roll of the shop. In general, the D6 tag for the uh, discounted rerolls, not gonna be worth it most of the time. Off the top of my head, I can't think of a situation where it would be worth it, but claim there are situations where it would be worth it. All right, once again, we're looking for our hearts. And I only need to play the one hand. I don't need to worry about playing any other hands. We're gonna go all in on the hearts flush. And with four discards, it shouldn't be that bad. 
All right, now we've got some serious options here. So we do have, uh, reminding folks, the interest that you get is maxed out when you reach $25. At $25, you get $5 of interest per round. And so uh, I don't need to go any higher than this. Now I can sort of spend money if I want. And so, you know, what kind of stuff do I want to spend on? Okay, one option I could get this Joker that gives me some kind of bonus for playing four of a kind. That's going to take me away from, you know, it's not going to be compatible with hearts. I don't have four cards uh, of the same rank that are all hearts. You know, in the end game, later on, it could be possible we manipulate our deck and we get a bunch of, uh, I don't know, nines of hearts or queens of hearts or something like that. You know, that could work. You could get both of these going at the same time. Uh, for us here now, okay, that's not going to be something that we want. Um, here we have a joker that gives us money for doing a thing so we are going to take that the thing that it does is it gives us money for discarding and with the red deck we got the extra discards okay this is a slam dunk get in here now uh we already know if we look at the boss here we've got 1600 a sort of middle to low hearts flush is worth 600 1600 points the high-end Hearts Flush is worth about 1,800 points. So we're good on scoring, which means uh, I don't need to reroll. I don't need to buy more Jokers. I don't need to buy a Celestial Pack for, you know, the planet cards that upgrade your hand. I don't need that. Uh, with the Spectral Pack here, if I buy this, I will go from $25 down to $21, and so I'll get only $4 interest instead of $5 interest. So buying this Spectral Pack, this costs $5. Instead of $4, this actually costs $5 because I'll lose $1 worth of interest. The question is, is this Spectral Pack worth $5? I think generally yes. So we're going to go ahead and open it even though uh, we don't max out our interest here. All right, so we've got, uh, you know, kind of similar flavors here. The Ankh gives you a copy of a Joker, but it destroys all the other ones. The Hex also gives you, you know, Polychrome, but destroys all the other ones. And so if I'm taking one of these, I'm losing something, potentially, a lot of something. Now, late game, you know, if we build up this Obelisk, you know, maybe we get this up to x3 or x4 or something like that having a copy of an obelisk is worth losing all of my other jokers you know instead of these destroying you can actually you can just sell these and then choose which one you want to copy it says you know it does it to a random one it's not actually random you get to choose by selling your cards so if i want i could make a second obelisk right now and then they would both grow at the same rate over the course of the run here um that might put me in kind of an awkward situation where, you know, right now this lusty joker is the difference between scoring 300 points or scoring the 1600 points to one shot the boss. If my flushes are only worth 300 points, then I'm not going to be able to get 1600 points even if I play four flushes. It's not going to work. So unfortunately, we're not able to do this here. If there were another good enough joker in the shop, then I would be able to do this and then buy the Joker after. But if we go back to the shop here, we have the four of a kind Joker here. Even with the extra discard of the red deck, it's gonna be hard for us to get that four of a kind, unfortunately. So if this were something else, if this were, uh, you know, maybe crazy Joker gives you molt for playing straights, then I would go for that. I would have taken the Ankh to copy my obelisk and then just picked up that joker but this one is not going to do it for us and it's not worth it probably to re-roll looking for something else so we're just going to move on here clubs are debuffed so notably you know here with my mail-in rebate if i have an ace that's debuffed it will not count it will not give me money but you know, that doesn't really matter. Mostly what I'm looking for is I just want to get my hearts. I know my hearts are going to win. Something, you know, maybe 
non-intuitive that I'm going to do here, a little bit greedy, let's say, um, in order to get more value from my mail-in rebate, I want to discard more cards. I want to see more cards. And so I'm going to discard this four of hearts. So even though it's hearts, even though I need my hearts in order to win, if I discard this four of hearts with the power of the four discards, I will find another heart later. It's not a big deal. So I'm going to discard this now. So instead of drawing four cards, we draw five cards. And because we drew five cards, we have this ace here that I can now discard. Now, the question is, do I, having already thrown away the four of hearts, do I throw away another heart? You know, the first one was not that greedy. This one may be a little bit greedy. And I think it's safe enough. I think we can do it. I think with three discards, we can find two more hearts out of these possible eight. So we got one more heart there. This Ace of Clubs is debuffed, I said, so we're not gonna get any money from it. Okay, now just show me that one more heart, even though I already threw away two. There we go, uh, perfectly fine here. If you wanted to get more value from your mail-in rebate, a move that you could do is you could play four cards. So instead of discarding, you could play them. And then if I draw an ace, then that gives me $3. It costs me $1 to play a hand, and then I get back $3 for drawing an ace. So, you know, it's a gamble. Uh, and I would do that most of the time. In most situations, I would gamble on that to try to get the extra value from my mail-in rebate. Um, here I'm not going to, and the reason why I'm not going to is because I have the obelisk, and I want to you know, create the situation where I have my flushes as my most played hand, and then I want to have my high card and my pair uh, not too high. I don't want to waste too many hands. I want to play them later so that I can build the obelisk bigger later. So we'll go ahead and just, I guess we don't need a discard. Uh, it's not gonna matter. You know, even if I drew an ace there, I wouldn't have a discard left to throw it away. But here we go, we've got the high-ish flush. This is easily more than 1600 points. We already know that. Uh, about 1900, right? We said it's about six times what the baseline flush would be. All right, now we've got a ton of money, so we're at the point of the game where we can kind of just buy whatever, whenever. So let's start with, okay, we've got Arcana Pack here, we've got a Buffoon Pack here. Um, the Arcana Pack gives you the ability to, you know, with the tarot cards, manipulate your deck, you know, change the suits, create copies of cards. So I'm going to pick up the Buffoon Pack first because the Buffoon Pack, you know, whatever jokers I get will give me information about how I should be building my deck. I mean, I already have some clear directions already. I wanna do flushes, I wanna do hearts. So, you know, it doesn't matter super much, but you know, maybe there's some information that I gain from looking at the Buffoon Pack that will then inform what I do in my Arcana pack. So we'll go Buffoon pack first. All right, uh, this uh, credit card allows us to you know, go negative on our money. Um, the main utility of this is sort of early on, if you go into negative, you can buy things like you know, extra income jokers. You can buy things like extra scoring jokers. And then if you're scoring more, you're using less hands and you're earning more money per round. So, you know, it's good to have your interest or your money saved up so you can earn interest. That's the main way that you're gonna earn money in the game is by saving interest. But it's also not the worst thing to go negative. Because like I said, if you have more scoring and you're using less hands and you're buying more value generating jokers with your you know, going into negative money here, that could be worth more than whatever the interest would have been. Something to consider. 
But for now, uh, we're going to go for the banana. You know, giving us sort of generic plus 15 molt here. So as we pick this up, something to think about. We said with our flushes, uh, the hearts flush was giving us, uh, you know, 16 to 1900 points, about 1800 points on average with a 24 molt. If we add in another 15 on top of that, uh, okay, the way that I think about this is 15 is a little bit more than half of 24, right? And so that's a little bit more than 50%, right? So we were scoring 1800 before, 50% more on top of that, that's going to take us to about 2700, um, you know, maybe closer to 3000. So that's what we're expecting, 3,000 points. All right, with our extra money here, we can go ahead and open the Arcana pack. So some options, uh, we're definitely, we don't need more clubs, we're going for hearts instead. Um, we could either $20 or remove two cards from our deck. Uh, the main thing that this is doing is it makes our deck more consistent. It's easier for us to find our hearts, easier for us to score when we need to. Because remember, the cost of not drawing the right hand means you have to play other hands and then you lose money that way. And so this hangman, you could think of this as this kind of gives you a little bit of extra money, you know, by making your draws more consistent. Um, but it's not going to be as much as $20 here. Uh, there are situations where you do want this instead of the $20 here. If we had some other kind of money generators, we would prefer uh, the card selection instead. Uh, if your deck is smaller, then removing two cards from a 30 card deck is way more impact than removing two cards from a 52 card deck. Um, and so... We'll take the Hermit here, but there are situations in the future where we might prefer a Hanged Man. Which means, now I can do things like, okay, we're up to $48 already. I can do things like buy this Wheel of Fortune. Um, it's one in four chance. I don't really care. I don't really need it to do the thing because it only costs me $3 and I have plenty of money to spend. Uh, but if it does, that would be exciting. And this Mars card here is going to upgrade my four of a kind. Uh, I would say since we have the money, you know, this is not immediately compatible with this Lusty Joker here, but I don't necessarily need this. You know, I could replace this Lusty Joker with something else later. And so one thing to think about is uh, staying open, right? You don't want to pigeonhole yourself too narrowly into one build uh at least at the beginning you want to keep your options open in that way you know as things are presented to you you have more different things that you can take um and so if i look at you know i haven't upgraded my flushes yet the only thing that's uh pulling me towards flushes is this lusty joker which i can always sell and replace with something else and at the end you know with this obelisk i want to switch from flushes to something else so this four of a kind that could be the something else i'm not going to play four of a kind right now but that could be something else for the future and then finally here we have the voucher that's offered to us so the way to think about this minus one ante the main thing that that does is it reduces all of the score thresholds if we go to the collection here under blinds so in the first ante the small blind that was 300 points the next one was 450 because the big blind is 50 percent more and then the boss was 600 that was the boss is always two times and so if we go from anti three back down to anti two this next round instead of 2800 points it would change to 800 points and so by making all of the rounds easier, then that gives you more time to sort of build up whatever it is you're trying to build. Also, uh, the game ends at anti eight. And so if this minus one anti takes us down to anti two, then that just gives us more time to play, you know, more rounds, like I said, to build up your money, more shops to buy booster packs and look at jokers and that sort of stuff. So probably we want to take this. 
The drawback we should pay attention to here, this is minus one hand per round. So for now, we aren't using our hands, right? We're just playing one hand, one shot each round. So the main thing that this would do is if you have minus one hand, that's one less dollar that you get every round. So is this extra ante worth one dollar times however many rounds that are left? You know, like if there's six times six rounds, there's 36 rounds left. Is this extra ante worth $36? Probably, probably it's worth it, but I'm not gonna take it now. And the reason for that is I already said between these two jokers with just Lusty, we were able to get 1600 points with the extra banana, the extra 15 molt, we should be able to get about 3000 points. That is enough to beat this 2800, right? So we already got uh, enough points so this voucher, I can always pick it up in the next round. And then that way, this minus one hand, I get that next round instead of this round. All right, here we have the situation with this D6 tag. Again, you know, you've got the re-rolling uh, starts at less money. So if I have all this money, I could now be interested in looking at purchasing more jokers in the shop. Uh, you know, possibly even replacing this lusty joker. One potential issue is if I take this skip, one, I lose whatever money that I was gonna get this round, you know, reward money plus interest money plus hands plus also money from my mail and rebate, you know, however much money that is. I also have to take on this higher score threshold, right? So instead of this 2,800 points, I said we can definitely one shot that 4,200 points, that one we definitely cannot one-shot. That one's definitely not going to work. Uh, unless maybe we somehow get a straight flush. That will work, but okay, it's probably not gonna happen. So this D6 tag, whatever money that you would spend on rerolls, that's the same amount of money that I would get from just playing this blind anyway, from the reward money and the interest money and stuff like that. So again, not gonna be worth it for us here. All right, we have uh, just the one two of hearts. We're trying to discard tens here like this. Let's look for our hearts. Trying to make our hearts flush. And just discard it if it's not a heart. Okay. Now we're in a situation I said, uh, what was it? Uh, with the banana here, I was estimating, you know, maybe 2,700, maybe 2,800. So, you know, I'm a little bit weary about using this two here, if this two is not gonna give us enough chips. Uh, but we'll try it. But I am hoping to get a better heart. Yeah, maybe something like this. I said we weren't gonna get a straight flush, but we did come rather close. Uh, I think this should be at least 2,700 points. It'll probably be more than 2,800 points. Remember we said uh, this plus 15 on top of our 24 molt was about 50% more. All right, and there we go. Just like we planned it, uh, about 2,800 points. It was, I'll admit, it was close, but uh, you know, just like we drew it up. And we also lost the banana. You know, it's a one in four that is gonna go away, but 100% uh, worth it because when we lose the banana, there is another joker that gives us times molt instead of this plus molt here, it gives us times molt. Uh, just like this obelisk gives us times molt and that other joker is very much worth it. You can only get it after you've purchased and lost a banana. And so that's what we're hoping to get. Uh, you know, no issues with losing our banana there. All right, so something to think about now. Uh, we did get the plus, you know, four of a kind here. And so maybe we might be interested in taking this four of a kind joker here. Um, I think at this point in the run, uh, 
you know, four of a kinds are still gonna be hard enough to come by that maybe this is not something I'm interested in right now. Um, instead, I'm interested in, uh, this is the blue joker. You can tell because it's blue. The blue joker uh, gives us chips for cards remaining in our deck. This is dynamic and so as you're playing and as you're discarding, you have less cards in your deck. This is, gives you less and less chips. Starts out at 104 right now while we have 52 cards, but it will be going down. And so maybe as an estimate, if I have, let's say, you know, four discards, discarding four cards at a time, that's about 16 cards less. Plus you also draw eight cards in your opening hand. And so all that together, if I'm minus 24, 25 cards, then that's minus 50 chips. So this is about worth 50 chips is what I would say. This is 50 chips uh, unless you purposefully don't use any discards. Is this for five bucks, is this worth 50 chips? Mm, probably. Probably because, you know, here, the way that you score points is you have whatever your blue chips number is and then times whatever your molt number is. And so there is some benefit to trying to get a mix of both. If you have all your jokers give you plus molt, then you are not scoring as much if you had, you know, potentially some amount of chips. Now, if you get the planet cards, the planet cards do give you extra chips. And so like the four of a kind here, uh, up to 90 now, um, and then can, you know, scale even higher than that. But for now, with no other planet cards, this short term, short term, this is going to be worth it. And, you know, we don't really have any other jokers anyway, so we could take this and then we can always sell it later. Uh, I do want to check out what's in these Arcana packs. This is perfect for us. We've got the sun here to make more hearts. And I want to typically, you know, the higher ranking ones, turn them into hearts. I do want to check here the boss. You know, there are some bosses that care about face cards, and so I don't want to accidentally make my face cards into hearts and then not be able to play them. Um, something else to consider, we said in the end game, I want to transition starting from flushes, turn into something else. And so maybe the else thing that I want to do, the other thing that I want to do is maybe, let's say straight flushes, right? That's a natural progression from flush to straight flush. Then what I might be interested in doing is instead of, you know, here, queen, queen, jack of hearts, I might be interested in doing ace, queen, jack of hearts and sort of spread it out, make it easier to get those straight flushes. Or, you know, whenever you're drawing a straight, the harder cards to draw are the ones that are in the middle. Or sorry, the harder ones to draw are the ones, yeah, that are in the middle, right? Like, cause if you have four cards in a row, then you can draw either of the outside ones, but if you're missing the middle one, then that one's, you know, you have less cards to draw. So there is some incentive to maybe, if I turn the five into hearts, it'll be easier to get those middle draws, five and the eight of hearts. Uh, what I am going to do is actually, I'm gonna do the queens and the jack. So there is a hand that we can make called the flush house, which is both a full house and a flush. And if I turn these three into hearts, that's going to give me the capability, not necessarily right now, but in the future, after we're done with flushes, I can play three queens, two jacks as a flush house. Um, and that has you know a ton of base scoring. It'll be worth a lot of points. So that's a little bit easier generally to make than straight flushes, actually. Also, I am leaving myself open to the option, these jacks, if I get the strength tarot card, I can upgrade these into queens, and then I would have five queens, all hearts. And then play, uh, you know, what's called a flush five, is when you have a five of a kind, all of the same suit. So in this Arcana pack here, you know, maybe what I'm looking for is uh, another sun or a fool card to make a copy of the sun. 
E, let's see here. So here's that strength card. So maybe something to think about is, you know, here I've got four of a kind upgraded. I've got hearts for now, and maybe I wanna do four of a kind in the future. If I do wanna to try to do four of a kind in the future, what I can do is two kings gives me six aces, or two sevens gives me six eights. So that's an option that I have. Another option I could go for uh, the Wheel of Fortune here, you know, potentially giving me some randomized value here. Uh, and they're gonna go for the strength. And the one that I'm gonna go for are the kings into aces. So there are those, like I said, bosses that, uh, you know, mess with your face cards. And so what I like to do in a lot of runs is get rid of face cards. And so turn those kings into aces. All right, uh, now we said we might take this uh, voucher here. So we lost the banana, the banana was giving us uh, some scoring and so we're gonna be scoring less than we were scoring before. And so now maybe, I don't know if I can beat this 4200. So maybe I'll take this now. Ante goes down to two, which means the base goes down to 800 and then the next one is 1200. And that we know we can definitely do even without this blue joker, which means I don't need to re-roll here. So I won't, I'll just keep saving my money. That way, you know, here in this shop, we are able to buy everything. In the next shop, we'll be able to do that as well. All right, some consideration for, do I want to skip here and then pick up $15 after the boss? Um, now it's closer. So now this $15 that you would get is pretty close to what we would get from the reward money and the interest and the mail-in rebate. Something that we miss out on is we want to play a lot of flushes so that our obelisk has flush as our most played hand and then we can play something else up to that many times. All right? so what this is saying now is I can play other hands up to seven times and then once I hit that seven, then that's it. That is my new most played hand. And so I want to build this up as much as possible, which means I want to play as many hands as possible and not skip here. Uh, another consider consideration is if I skip here, you know, my immediate scoring needs are met here. Uh, you know, I can definitely do this 1600, but all future rounds, occur one round earlier, which means, you know, that the game gets harder for all of the time forever. So the question is, you know, is this skip here, is this $15? Not only is that worth the same amount of money as I would get from playing the round, but is that worth enough more that it is worth an extra 50% to my scoring? because all future rounds are now gonna be 50% harder earlier if I'm one round ahead. And the answer is no, it's not worth it. All right, next we've got, uh, I wanna discard my fives. I want to look for, I know hearts as a flush will win. So we'll just do that. Looking for hearts and then also trying to get rid of as many fives as possible. So here's again, we're in that same situation where I could discard another heart here and then look to draw more of our hearts. And I am gonna do that. So we did use the sun tarot card giving us extra hearts. So I feel safe here throwing away an extra heart. And then that way we draw five instead of drawing four. Um, here we've already gotten what we need. And with the help of this, you know, blue joker here plus 50 chips. If we go to our flush here, we said, you know, kind of a medium-ish 
flush is going to be 75 chips. So 40 chips from our cards plus 35 uh, from the base here. So if that's 75 and the blue joker is giving us 50 more on top of that, that's going to be, you know, about two thirds extra, uh, right? Yeah, about two thirds of 75. And so if we were scoring 1600 before or, you know, 1800 before, then two thirds of that is 1200. So it adds up to about 3000 is how we got to 3000 here. And so this is what I was saying about, you know, don't try to calculate these two things together, but sort of calculate what were we doing before? What is the new different thing? What is the change? And the change is an extra 50 chips is worth an extra 60%. All right, so we've got some options here for jokers. Uh, one of these, when we play our face card, they turn into gold cards, and then gold cards are gonna earn us extra money in the future um, if they're held in our hand. So not the first time that you play them, because the first time you play your cards, they become gold, and then later you don't play them because they're already gold, and that's how that's gonna work. So, you know, here a value generating joker, money generating joker investing in our future. The hiker generates value in kind of a more, I'm gonna say direct way. Subtle, but direct. And the way that this works is, you know, when you play your cards, they permanently get upgraded. They permanently gain extra chips. And so if you play an eight, it gets a plus four. And then now every time you play that eight in the future, it's gonna be 12. It's gonna be more than an ace. And if you play it a second time, that second time is gonna go up to 16 and it's worth twice as much as it was before. This only applies to the cards that you actually play. And you only actually play, at least in this run what we've been doing, we only play five cards per round. But that's a permanent bonus. So permanently we gain 20 chips per round. So it is spread out over your different cards and the RK spread out over our different hearts. But it does add up over time if you get it early enough. And you can always sell it later. You know, you we get the value out of it early and then after we need to replace it with something a little bit more impactful then we can sell it so i am going to take uh this hiker uh i will also say that you know i'm trying to go for unlocks so you know just to since i have the extra money you don't do this but since i have the extra money i'm going to buy this so that i have it unlocked and then i'm going to replace it with Here's the hiker, that was the one that I actually wanted. Then, okay, here with the booster packs, let's start with the standard pack. And again, here's kind of the same reason before between the standard pack and the arcana pack. The standard pack, you know, whatever cards I get, that will give me information about what type of tarot I want, what type of changes that I wanna to make to my deck. So if I go in here, I have the option to get more hearts. You know, I already have hearts. Might as well get more hearts. Uh, I will say this. In the end game, I don't just want more hearts. I want more of specific hearts. You know, maybe I want aces of hearts. Maybe I want queens of hearts. Maybe I want to make a flush house. Maybe I want to make a flush five. You know, these secret poker hands that you don't start with. And so is this six of hearts going to help me do that? I think the answer is yes, technically, though it's not great. You know, if I add more cards to my deck, then I see the same cards less often. The more sixes I have, the less aces I'll draw, the less queens I'll draw. And then with this hiker upgrading the cards that I have, I would rather all of the upgrades be stacked onto very few cards rather than spreading out over very many cards. So it's very close, it's marginal. I think I am going to take it here, but in most cases with it just being a plain six, having no upgrades at all, you know, it's not one of these glass cards, uh, I think you don't take it. But I'm gonna try to make this flush house thing happen. All right, so now that I know that I have the extra six, 
Now, you know, with this strength here, I know, okay, I, sh I don't want to turn my sixes into sevens. Maybe what I want to do is turn a five into a six. Uh, we didn't get any fives, so that's not going to happen. What other options do we have? Uh, wild cards could help us, you know, make our flush house, you know, or could help us make flushes with our hearts. Stone cards are good if you're playing three of a kind, if you're playing two pair, if you're playing something that isn't already five cards, but flushes are not going to be compatible. So maybe we want something like this. We could get the extra molt cards. So here with these two hearts, I can give them plus four molt on each of those. That could be useful to us. Um, I could get the random planet cards. I think what I'm going to do is go for the lovers. Go for the... It is not necessarily one of the stronger tarot picks, but I think in this selection here, um, it's the most towards what I want to be doing. And the thing that I want to be doing in the end is I want to switch from flushes to something else. And so by turning this queen into hearts, that is what's going to make that possible. Now we've got four queens of hearts. It doesn't look like it, but we do. Question, do we want to re-roll here? If I re-roll, it's going to take me down to $28. If I buy something, then it'll take me below $25. And so, you know, I'll get less than the full amount of interest. Also, if I re-roll here, I'm going to be, and I want to take something, I have to sell something, I have to replace something. So there isn't anything that I necessarily need to have now. It, there isn't necessarily anything that I want to have now. So I'm not going to re-roll. But in the future, you know, with our extra money, Maybe that's something that we could start considering. Looking for better jokers, or at least more synergistic jokers. Uh, this blue joker, like I said, only giving us 50 chips is not super impressive. All right, the hook boss uh, discards random cards when you play cards. So, you know, if you don't have as many discards, some trouble that you can get into is, you know, maybe you're looking for a specific hand maybe you're looking for a straight and you use your three discards and you don't find it then you're in hot water you're in trouble because now when you play hands you lose cards in your hand they get discarded and so it's harder to hold on to cards but since we're playing on the red deck since we have the extra discard uh we should be able to just beat this boss the 1600 in one shot so i don't actually have to interact with this ability i don't have to worry about this uh, i do want to make sure i'm discarding nines from my mailing rebate i don't think that's going to matter i'll just discard anything that's not hearts um do i want to you know again take this risk here potentially you know discard a fifth card we'll do that since we got three discards left Got plenty of time to find more hearts than that. Uh, here, again, you know, do I want to discard three? Do I want to discard five? Is maybe too risky. Uh, discarding four should be fine. Do I want to discard these nines for the extra three bucks? I've got 10 hearts left. If I do this, I have four chances to get one heart out of my 31 cards. So 10 out of 31, I've got four chances. I'm gonna do it. Here, I'm admitting this is risky, uh, but I'm gonna do it. Or maybe we don't have to risk it because if I do this and I just draw a heart and I play the heart instead of this nine, then this ability might randomly discard the extra nine. So that's something to consider as well. I think I'm gonna risk it, I think it's fine. There we go. Oh, also this says, uh, we have the wild card as well. You know, not just the natural hearts, but we have the wild card as well.
All right, we don't need diamonds. We already have hearts, though I will point out, you know, any wild card that you have counts for, you know, multiple of these suit jokers. And so if you have a lot of wild cards, you can actually take multiple of these suit jokers if they're powerful enough. There are uncommon versions of these that give you even more powerful effects for specific suits. And so that's something to consider. Uh, for now, you know, just sort of these common baseline ones we don't need. Uh, we do have the option of this is another value generating joker. So instead of the value for discards that we're getting from the mail-in rebate, this will give us uh, value, uh, what well, gives you sell value. And so we can pump up the sell value of our jokers. Doesn't give us any immediate benefit, but then later on we can sell them. And so something to think about is if this upgrades all five of my jokers, that's plus $5 every round compared to this mail-in rebate. Sometimes I have the seven, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm able to discard it. Sometimes I need to play it as part of my flush. And so, you know, maybe this could be an exchange. Maybe I have enough scoring that I can, you know, maybe sell uh, the hiker and then take this, uh, it's called the gift card instead. You know, the hiker giving me uh, some benefit, but is it going to be as much as what this gift card would give me? And I think it's close, but I think I'm gonna go for this gift card. Uh, before I pick up the gift card, um, I do, like I said, I wanna get all the Joker unlocked, so we'll just do this, sell it, replace it. There we go. And now with my extra money here, let's go with the Celestial Pack first. So a couple different options here. I'm not playing high card. I'm not playing straights, uh, not playing two pairs. So I'm just gonna pick the higher level ones. Here's the Mars card, here's the Earth card. Uh, between these, the order that I'm going to do it is, you take Earth, first and I'm going to take Mars second and then the reason for that is if this Arcana pack is a fool and it copies the last played planet card it will copy Mars instead of uh, whatever earth for the full house okay so this is kind of interesting we could you know with the Emperor get random tarot cards could be anything uh, with the death here I can do sort of multiple operations. I can, with this queen of hearts, make an extra heart and also make an extra queen. So I will do that. I'm gonna make an extra queen and what am I going to give up here? Um, I would say, you know, since I already have a bunch of aces, then maybe keep the king that could maybe turn into an ace, keep the five that could maybe turn into a six. I'm gonna get rid of the seven. And if I take this, this is the overstock voucher, it gives me an extra shop slot, something you might not know. If I, as soon as I buy this and it adds an extra shop or slot to the shop, it will re-roll and it'll give me three things right now. So this is a free re-roll when I pick it up. Uh, the only problem is if I spend this $10, I lose my interest. So I'm not gonna take this now, but I'll take it uh, in the next shop. All right, something to consider now. We, before, we did this 2800 before, right? And then we took the uh, the hieroglyph voucher and then it reduced the ante and we were able to go back in time. But, uh, you know, last time we had the banana and this blue joker giving us 50 chips, we said, oh, that's about 3000 points. So, you know, just a quick mental math there. We're good here. This 4,200, we would need to play two hands. We would need to play two flushes. And we can definitely do that, that's fine. We can play two flushes. Um, and so, you know, here I'm thinking about whether or not I want to take this spectral pack. 
and I think the spectral pack uh, I'm gonna pass all right there we go uh, good start with the hearts you know, actually here with the $3 for discarding a seven, I am gonna throw away this seven of hearts. And let's see here, we said 50 chips from the blue joker, we get 3000 points. So, you know, if you discard more cards and you draw more cards, the blue joker gets smaller faster. Um, but maybe it's not gonna matter super much. So yeah, let's go ahead and do the full extra discard here, trying to get more value out of our mail-in rebate. With two discards left, uh, I will just be doing four here instead of five. We did get the sevens and we did get the flush. And then now, yeah, here, you know, slightly more than 50 chips. Look at that. Since we had the, the kings and the queens and the ace, uh, we had slightly more chips, giving us slightly more scoring here. But sort of the approximation, you know, about 3,000 was correct. And then so I knew in the next round, the 4,200, we could not one-shot it. Not that you have to one-shot it. You know, you just get more value if you do. All right, a couple options here. We've got the popcorn. Gives you a bunch of molt up front, but then it sort of decays. It gets weaker and weaker each round. Uh, you can sell it before it dies, or you can let it die on you if you're really desperate and you need the score. Uh, we've got the seance. Rewards you for playing straight flushes. And so with us having already made more hearts on our deck, you know, maybe we could uh, get some straight flush action happening. Um, even without that, even without going for the straight flushes necessarily, we also get, this is a holographic card, uh, gives us the plus 10 molt. So, you know, even if we don't make a straight flush, this could still be useful to us. Um, I do have to think about what I might want to get rid of here. And so here's the calculation that you can do. So we said, you know, with just the Lusty Joker, that was giving us between, uh, it was 1,600, 1,800 points, you know, that range, right? And we said, okay, with the Blue Joker, plus 50 chips was about plus two thirds. It's about plus 60% or something like that. Here with the Lusty Joker, taking me up to 24 molt, this plus 10, how much is plus 10 out of 24? Uh, less than 50%, right? You know, let's call it 40%. So if this plus 10 is giving me plus 40%, and this plus 50 chips is giving me something like plus 65%, then this 50 chips is better than plus 10 molt. So that's like another way that you can kind of quickly calculate the relative value of jokers in you know what you have here. Calculate uh, you know how much is your base amount. You know so my flushes with my lusty joker that's about uh, 75 times 24, and then this is 60% more chips versus plus 40% more molt. Before I decide on this, let's take a look at the booster packs here. Um, I'm not fully convinced that we can consistently make our straight flush, but maybe there's something in these booster packs that would make me more convinced. So let's take a look at the standard pack first. Uh, an extra five is probably, well, we got the extra six and then an extra five. That could be something that I'm interested in doing. I think, you know, since I already have the queens, I have to decide. I have to decide if I'm going to go for straight flushes, I want to go high or low. And I think uh, it's easier to go for the high ones. So here's that situation where I said, well, I'm not going to take this five, even though this is a lucky three, it's not a three of hearts. And so I'm going to skip here and then go into the Arcana pack. There is some consideration for there was a 
queen, just a generic queen, even though it's not queen of hearts. And we could be going for, in the late game, switch to four of a kind in queens. Uh, but I think I'm going to stick to not four of a kind, but maybe flush house could still be viable. Bunch of options here. We get money straight up with temperance. $18 is a great deal. Devil gives us a gold card, which gives us, you know, money per round. It would take a lot of rounds for it to surpass the temperance. But I think, you know, an anti three could be worth it. Could be worth more than $18 in the long run. Steel cards going to give you molt when they stay in your hand. So notably, the order of operations here is this happens first. Lusty Joker is going to give you plus four on each card as it's being played, as it's being scored. And then the steel card is going to happen after all of that, which means this 1.5 is, you know, multiplying all of this stuff from our Lusty Joker. So that is very useful, very exciting. Uh, we also have the option of the hangman again. Hangman removing cards from our deck, just making it more consistent, easier to find the things that we want. I think the thing that I want here, it's close between either money or the card selection, right? And this is kind of the same dilemma that we had before with the hermit giving us $20. Um, I think I'm feeling good about where I am money-wise, and so maybe what I want to go for is consistency. Let's take a look, what's the boss again? Uh, face cards are drawn face down. Okay, interesting. And so let's go for the consistency. Uh, I will say, you know, with the extra money, you get extra shop rerolls, and you get extra, you know, potentially tarot cards from that as well. So something to consider. But of all of the tarot cards that I want, Hangman and Death are probably the ones that I want the most. So let's go for card removal. Uh, I'm gonna remove this low two of clubs and maybe this eight of clubs. All right, with all that done, do I feel comfortable making straight flushes with what I currently have? No. Do I feel like I could make straight flushes in the future? Maybe. And using the hangman did help with that slightly. So if that's the thing that I want to do, maybe I want to, between these, between the gift card and the mail-in rebate, um, I think the gift card is more consistent, so I'm going to get rid of the mail-in rebate. This obelisk is doing nothing for us this entire time, but it will give us a lot later on, so I feel comfortable holding on to it. Let's get rid of the mail-in rebate. Pick up the popcorn just for the unlock. Replace it with this seance. And then once again here, we don't have enough money to buy anything because we want to save our money for interest. So, you know, actually that's another consideration for doing the temperance there, picking up the money so that we can buy this overstock voucher, but we'll be able to pick it up in the next shop, no problem. The hangman is gonna make it easier for us to get our straight flushes. And then these spectral cards are gonna be worth more than, you know, whatever we would have gotten from re-rolling. Here's that D6 tag showing up again. Notably here, if you skip this blind, that voucher, will not show up again. We'll go to the boss and then after the boss, you'll get a whole new new ante with a new set of vouchers. So we've got a play here. We said uh, with the blue joker and the lusty joker, this was about 3000 points. This seance here plus 10 molt is another 40% of 24 molt, right? So plus 40% on 3000 is together, this is 4000 points. So I know I calculated that I have got 4,000 points. So let's go ahead and I don't need to worry about my mail-in rebate anymore. Really, I'm only looking to draw my hearts, except maybe I wanna to try to draw my straight flush. So let's throw away the three, looking for those high hearts. Most of which we have queens. So I'm looking for 
Ace of Hearts, Jack of Hearts, Ten of Hearts. Um, you know, probably not going to get them, but we'll at least try. So now I've got the situation. Okay, six, eight, four. I could get the five and the seven of hearts for my straight flush. Is easier than maybe getting the ace, jack, and ten. So maybe if I do something like this, it'll be easier for me to get my straight flush. Let's give that a try. Okay, six, seven, eight. Now we're just missing the nine. So I already have a flush that's already going to win the round. Um, I am going to risk it. And the risk here is if I miss, if I don't draw my flush, then we just play a hand and we lose a dollar. So it's worth it, the risk for this spectral card. I guess with the four here, I also have the opportunity to draw the five of hearts. So five of hearts or nine of hearts. Four cards for one out, nine of hearts. Three cards for two outs, nine of hearts or five of hearts. I think the two outs is going to be better. And then also safer because we already have the flush and we don't have to worry about losing our flush. Let's try again. We do have the five, yeah. Oh, we didn't get it. Uh, that's okay. You know, some consideration for do I want to just play this as garbage and then, you know, try to draw again, try to get that uh, straight flush. It's not that important to me. I think the more important thing to me is making this obelisk happen. And then there we go. We said, you know, from 3000 points, uh, or the one time we got 3,600 points. If I add about plus 40% on top of that, um, a little bit more than 4,000 here. But we should note that that 4,000 is less than this 5,600 here. So I am looking for some additional scoring in this shop. Uh, since I have, you know, looking at this as a mega pack for $8, $10 for this voucher, I don't have enough money to just kind of casually buy everything. So I'm not going to take the standard pack anymore. I'm no longer interested in adding too many cards to the deck. Now I want to start removing cards and getting down to where I can make my straight flushes. So we'll start with the Mega Arcana. Okay, the death card here, the sun card here, I can make more hearts. I can make more copies of my hearts. I can also make an extra steel card. I think, you know, between the devil giving me a gold card and the chariot giving me a steel card, I think I'd rather have a chariot giving me a steel card. Because right now we said, I don't have enough score to beat this 5,600 here. I was only able to score 4,600, but an extra 50%, that would take me over the top. So if I get this, that is the same as income, right? That's one less hand used. Uh, some consideration for, you know, making more hearts makes it easier for me to make straight flushes. All right, so we have multiple queens multiple jacks, we can have an extra 10, nine, and eight, or we can do something like make this steel and then make a copy and have two steel cards. I'm gonna do the greedy thing. And the greedy thing is use the sun to get more hearts and then try to do this seance stuff. And if that's the thing that I wanna do, I said, you know, I could get the steel card or if I just get a straight flush instead of a straight, straight or instead of a flush, that's also gonna be worth enough points. And so maybe with the death card, make a copy of the 10, make it easier to draw by getting rid of this three. Let's do that. If I am gonna be doing straight flushes, I could be looking at 
uh, the runner here, leveling up, giving me more chips every time I play a straight. Uh, not typically what you want to be doing with, uh, you know, straight flushes are a little bit harder to make than regular straights, whereas like you can make two straights in a round with this. Um, okay, so those are some things to consider. Um, I could replace this blue joker. Right now this blue joker is giving me 50 chips basically every time. Starts out 100, but it goes down to 50 after discarding. And so this would be smaller now, but it would get bigger eventually. And so let's do this. The plan is we will play a straight flush by getting rid of this blue joker. Let me check out the boss effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is the, the face down one. Okay. Blue joker, you're out. Runner, you're in. You know, I could also have sold the gift card. You know, this value generating joker. Um, but I think we're fine with the scoring. So I'm gonna keep as much uh, value generating as I can. Uh, some consideration for, you know, replacing Lusty Joker with this uh, smiley face here because I don't have any upgrades on my flushes. I don't need to be playing flushes. I could just switch to straights. And with my straights, I could just switch to, you know, these face card straights. But I think, you know, with the hearts that we have, we have more hearts than we have face cards. So I'm going to stick with the Lusty Joker. The Voucher, I am going to take. And then you can see here, you know, it generates extra cards in the shop. Um, we go down to $23 instead of $25. So we do only get $4 interest instead of $5 interest. Um, but that's going to be fine. The Voucher is 100% worth it. I lose a dollar here. So the Voucher is worth or cost me $11 instead of costing me $10. But the extra access to the extra shop slot, that is equivalent to more rerolls, which costs money. And with that, we're good to go. So one straight flush will win or two hearts flushes. Let's look for that straight flush. We already got the 10, so that's a good start. Well, that didn't go great. Okay, so we got the queen. Actually, what we have here, this is a flush house we said we wanted to do. Do I play the flush house now or commit to this straight flush? So something to keep in mind, this is gonna make my face cards face down. Wait, cards drawn, oh, this is not the face card one. This is the, uh, when I play cards, they get face down. Hmm. Do I want my flush house? I've got two discards left. I want my straight flush. I want, I want to do the wacky stuff. I want to do the sand stuff. We'll do flush house another time. Show me some king of hearts, ace of hearts. Also the jack. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Lucky. I'll take it. I accept being lucky. That's the royal flush. It's the same as a straight flush. All right, we know a royal flush or, you know, a straight flush is going to be worth 8,000 points-ish. Keep that in mind. Oh, we have the opportunity here to make more face cards, random face cards. You know, maybe they're hearts, maybe they're not hearts. Um, maybe they're, you know, I need an extra king here. Maybe I don't get a king, maybe I get jacks instead. This is probably not something that I'm interested in doing. Sells for three bucks. Uh, notably here, the gift card, it raises the value of all of our, uh, not just our jokers here, you know, going up to $3 here or $5 for my lusty joker and my 
uh, obelisk that I've been holding on to this whole time also increases the value of your consumables. So we haven't had any consumables in the shop, but now this consumable, as long as I hold on to it, it will also keep generating more value. And so that's why, you know, kind of on average, this gift card is better than the mail and rebate that we had before. So I'm going to hold on to this spectral card for that reason. Also notably here, the game prevents you from getting repeats. So if I have a Joker here, it's not going to show up in the shop. If I open up a Celestial pack, it's going to be all different planets. There's no repeats. If I have a Tarot card up here and open a... Uh, Arcana pack, there's no that tarot card is not going to show up again. And so as long as I hold on to this familiar card, the seance is not going to give me another copy of this same familiar card, which means it makes it more likely that I get something else that I might want more. So that's another very small marginal benefit to holding on to this uh, spectral card. Now, as far as the uh, shopping here, if we go, we just beat the boss. So if we go to the blinds here, the next one's gonna be 6,000 we can do. If we get the straight flush, straight flush will win. If we get the straight flush, I think we can do it. Uh, which means I don't need any of this scoring stuff here. I don't need the extra chips. I don't need diamonds here. Um, so what do I want? Let's take the celestial pack, you know, potentially improving our scoring. Uh, for example there, Neptune. Now, uh, you know, they're plus 40 chips and then plus, what was it, plus three molt. Uh, do I know off the top of my head, you know, how much that is gonna improve my score? I don't, doesn't matter, also doesn't matter. What I do know is straight flush always wins, or at least for now. Straight flush will definitely be more than 6,000. And then when we play our straight flush, we can reevaluate whether or not uh, it's enough. And I will save my money for interest now. All right, in the next round, this will give us five bucks if we skip it. Uh, we'll definitely get more than five bucks if we play. All right, we got the nine and the 10 and the queen. This is perfect. This is as good as it gets. So we need either the eight of hearts or the king. Well, okay, we only have one eight and we only have one king. Wait, we've got two eights, right? We made a second eight. So we've got three outs, but we've got also four discards, four cards at a time. Let's take a look. E okay, this is our last chance. We didn't get it. When I said it was our last chance, I lied. It's not really our last chance. We could, a couple options here. For this runner here, I can go ahead, I can just play a straight. It's not a straight flush, but it's still a straight. Um, it's got four hearts in it, and I do get this molt from the seance, and I do get this extra times here from the obelisk. Uh, this will mm, be less than 6,000 points. So I'll play this straight, and then I'll play some other hand. That's one option. Uh, another option is if I play, you know, let's say these cards here, I can just get rid of these four cards and continue looking for that king or eight. Like I said, I have three cards that I could possibly get. Uh, I am going to do that. It's gonna cost me a dollar to play an extra hand, but I have to play an extra hand anyway. So let's do this. Uh, we got the six here. So now again, we have this option. Okay, do we play the flush that we definitely have right now? Or do we risk it going for our straight flush? If we risk it, will we have enough points? Will we have the 6,000 points to pass? I think the answer is no. I think we won't have enough points. That would be very sad. Oh well. Mm, maybe we were too greedy. 
because when we play this, it'll also reset our obelisk here, and so we'll get less points that way. I don't think this is 6,000 points, but I think, you know, if we discard here looking for those last cards, uh, I am doubtful we'll get it. So I'm gonna go ahead and burn the flush for maybe f four and a half thousand. Yeah. And then now we're in a situation where, you know, we could play a flush here or we could play, here's two pair. Uh, I think two pair, even though, you know, it would look like this, we've got the nine of hearts, six of hearts. I don't think that's going to be 1500. It's possible, but I, I, I'm not feeling it. So let's try this. This is an emergency situation. I could calculate whether or not it would be enough points, but I'm just gonna judge that it's not and try to roll some extra hearts here with the familiar. Like these hearts. There we go. Once again, we got lucky here. I will say we're playing especially greedy you know, we had the option to play flushes earlier, but we decided, okay, I don't want to play the flush because I want to play the full house or the straight flush instead. We have the option to, you know, keep building up our obelisk, but we're trying to, you know, do these flushes first. And so we're kind of like being greedy in another different kind of way by, you know, not replacing this obelisk with a different joker. Um, we're being greedy in kind of we had a chips joker and we replaced it with this other one because this one is scaling and can keep increasing. We're being greedy in uh, this seance is really not doing that much other than just giving us 10 molt, which is not that great. This gift card is giving us money instead of giving us scoring, which is why you know potentially we have trouble scoring. Uh, we took the hieroglyph voucher, which you know decreased our number of hands you know, so that we have to score with fewer hands. So we've taken many, many risks already, but that's okay. You know, you don't get to have fun if you don't take any risks. A flush is perfectly serviceable. All right, we, again, we've got three of a kind, four of a kind. That's not really what we're doing with this straight flush stuff here. Maybe this buffoon pack will have some different jokers for us. Uh, extra discard, making it easier for us to find our straight flush. Could be something that we're interested in doing. What would we get rid of? You know, these jokers are not necessarily the highest scoring, and so that's kind of uh, a bottleneck that we're running into. And so maybe what we need to do is we need to give up on our income here, give up on our gift card. Or do we want to be greedy and go, uh, delayed gratification is another different kind of income. I think we can go here. We don't really need the income because this obelisk will take care of our end game scoring. I've just been trying to get as much money as I can because I'm always trying to get as much money as I can, but we don't really need it necessarily. So here in Anti-4, we're halfway through. Fine, we'll give up on the gift card. Uh, between these, the flush, it's only plus 15 chips and plus two molt, but every little bit helps. And we will save the voucher for the next shop. Coupon tag here makes everything free. This is booster packs and uh, Joker cards. Um, the my Joker slots are already full, so I'm not necessarily going to buy a lot of Joker cards. Um, this is probably worth about 15 to 25 bucks. One potential issue that we have is you know, maybe I'm not scoring as much as I want to. Maybe I'm not scoring as much as would get me to this 1200 here or 12,000 here. Also the Flint boss, it's gonna reduce your base chips and base molt. And so whatever hand you play, half of your chips, half of your molt, that's a huge decrease in scoring power. 
So maybe I want the extra shop before the boss. All right, here we've got, uh, you know, a bunch of queens here because we've got so many queens in the deck. Let's, you know, do a quick deck check here. We've got three tens, three jacks, a bunch of queens, just the one king. Let's try to go for, again, this uh, medium to high straight flush. We almost got punished last time for being greedy, but uh, it'll be fine. You know, there we got tan jack, queen. We do have, uh, notably, we've got the extra discard from the drunkard. Um, I don't need this seven because an eight already completes this set here. There we go, we got the king. And no real reason to use any more discards than that. Uh, this is definitely going to be eight, 9,000 points. Oh, even higher, because we got uh, the Neptune Planet card. All right, in here we've got uh, you know a bonus for aces. I'm not really playing that many aces. We've got the Devil card here. Cost three dollars, gives you three dollars. So I am going to take that. The spectral pack here. Let's go ahead and take a look. A lot of interesting options here. So one option we're presented with immediately is, do I want to use this uh, sigil card? I think it's actually pronounced sigil, but I can't wrap my brain around that, so I'm gonna call it sigil. So this sigil card, uh, if I use it to change the suits, could be anything, right? So I could turn all of these into hearts, all these aces into hearts. That would be the best scenario. Uh, if I get something that's not hearts, then I lose my jacks, which would be kind of crippling. So maybe I don't want to use this. Uh, there is some consideration for this devil card. I can go ahead and use it right now, or I can wait. Um, I'm going to wait for the next round because I can just use this when I get to the end of the round and I'm about to play my last hand. I can play this and get the money right away instead of if I put it on a card now, it just gets shuffled into the deck. Uh, Ouija here turns all these into the same rank. is not really compatible with Seance. Also, the minus one hand size is crippling. So something to note about this. Even if the thing that you're going for is, I want to play five of a kind, I want to play four of a kind. Oh, the best way to do that is just make all my cards the same or make a bunch of my cards the same. The minus one hand size makes it harder to draw those duplicates. So it kind of balances itself out. It doesn't actually help that much. The thing that it's trying to do, make it easier to get four of a kind, make it easier to get full house. It doesn't actually help you because of the minus one hand size is so crippling. Because, you know, here when we're going for our full half, or when we're going for our straight flush, we hold on to four cards and discard four cards. We're only able to draw four cards at a time. If I have minus one hand size, maybe I'm holding on to four cards and I'm only able to look at three cards at a time. Then, you know, three times five discards is much less than four times five discards. And so that's kind of one of the major weaknesses of the minus hand size. You just see less stuff. And so if I'm looking at this ectoplasm, I could get a negative joker, I could get an extra joker slot. The cost of this minus one hand size for now is going to be too much. I'm not going to be able to survive that. Or, you know, I'm not going to feel comfortable doing that. Maybe I would survive, but maybe I, it would be a struggle. If I had more powerful jokers, if I had joker slots that I actually cared about using, then I would care about this. But any of these jokers are disposable. You know, all of these commons here are easily replaceable. So I don't really need the extra joker slot. What I really need is just better jokers, period. Uh, I could take cryptid to, you know, potentially give me more queens or more jacks. And so there is the option of I make you know, a gold jack, and then I just make more of them, and then that makes it easier for me to get my straight flushes. What I really want is more kings, 
or potentially more nines. I already have three jacks, I already have too many queens, so maybe that's not gonna work. If the thing that I'm trying to do is straight flushes, or we have the option, okay, forget about straight flushes. We tried to do straight flushes, it was too hard. Uh, we tried to do straights with the runner and the seance and it was too hard. Maybe the thing that we wanna do now is just make a bunch of queens and transition into flush houses. I think I'm gonna stick with straight flushes. I think straight flushes is gonna be harder and therefore more interesting. So we'll stick with straight flushes, which means the only one that I'm considering here is the trance now. So add a blue seal to a card. So how about this queen? So between these cards here, you know, you wanna put this on a card that's held in your hand. You wanna put this on a card that you don't play but as we're looking for our straight flushes, the cards that we don't play, we discard them. And so I wanna put this on a card that I don't wanna discard. And that card is the queen. The queen, I don't wanna discard. If I get my queen of hearts, I wanna hold on to it. But if I get an extra queen of hearts, then you know I can hold on to this uh, blue seal one. And so, the blue seal, you want to put it on a card that you want to never discard. The queen of hearts is one of those that I never want to discard because that's part of my straight flush. But if I draw an extra, then I'll get the blue seal value. All right, we could get the, the voucher here. We're going into the boss now, so we're going to lose the ability to buy the voucher. I'll take that. Uh, I have extra money here, so I could pick up this booster pack. Um, I am looking for, in the future, better jokers. And so, I'm not gonna reroll right now, but in the future I am looking for better jokers. And so, even though I can take this and I would have the $25 and I would still get my interest, since I don't have any income generating uh, jokers, uh, I am only getting money from my interest. And so, if I buy this, I might not have enough money for rerolls in the future. I'm just gonna save my money. All right, here's the hard one. The flint, uh, base, chips, and molt are halved. Uh, so our straight flush, I think is worth, on this last one, it was worth uh, 12,000 points without the debuff. And then now with the debuff, it's gonna be worth less than that. So that's something to keep in mind. This one's gonna be tough because the shop did not present us with some scoring options. We could have re-rolled, we could have spent some money, but I think we'll still survive. It'll just be kind of tough. So let's discard at least in the beginning looking for that straight flush. Uh, for example, here we just need the nine. Uh, I don't need the six. And I've got two nines. Give that a try. Okay, we got that queen. So I'm gonna throw away the seven, looking for the nine. Uh, we got the queen again. Maybe something like this. Rude. All right. We are looking for either the nine or the king. That opens up some new possibilities. So we've got one king, we've got two nines. And something to acknowledge, I think something important to say is a straight flush is not going to do it, right? Because it was barely 12,000 before, and now we've got the debuff from the Flint boss. So, if I do this and I risk it, I might not get there. So what I'm gonna do instead, I'm gonna give up on the straight flush and play this straight instead. I still have a decent number of hearts. It's not as much as a flush, but I uh, have a decent number of hearts. I'm gonna play this straight so that I upgrade my runner. Do it like that.
And then with this next one, uh, we don't have a straight. We do have a flush. If we play the flush, it'll weaken our obelisk. And maybe that's something to be concerned about. If I wanted to get a straight, I would need a king or a nine again. If I go for a full house, a full house might also work. So maybe if I do something like this, I could get either a 10 or a queen. Hmm. Let's go for I've got a couple tries here. I've got one discard and I've got one hand that I can burn. Let's go for, I think we can get the flush house if we do this. So we've got this queens, we've got two nines, one more 10. If I discard, or actually if I play these, then I can get the flush house. Or I can play four of a kind queens. They'll get the debuff, but then now I've got, you know, times, almost times two on the obelisk. Uh, if I was really concerned about it, I could use the sigil and I could, you know, change these and make a different suit. But I think, you know, I want to get that hearts value. Now with the devil here, I said, you know, the same reason I want to put the blue seal on the queen. I'm going to put a blue seal on the 10 because I have three of them. And then do something like this. You know, the straight flush would have worked out, wouldn't it? Oh, I didn't have any faith. Telescope will give us the flush planet card. Uh, what is it? Uh, Jupiter? Jupiter every time I open a celestial pack. Um, except... You know, here I want to transition. If I want to start doing obelisk stuff, let's start doing obelisk stuff. So no more flushes. So I actually don't want this. What I want to do is I want to upgrade my other different hands. So let's try to do that. Uh, straights, sure. Arcana pack. Okay, we got that steel card opportunity. We got the more money. I think I'm gonna this time. I'm gonna take the money, so that I can potentially replace these jokers with something more impactful. Let's say. Uh, before I re-roll, I am going to buy this planet card. Well, I'll buy this world card and then sell it, and then buy this planet card. Um, and the reason for that is, again, as long as I'm holding onto this planet card, there's no repeats. So I won't get this one, I'll get some other different planet cards. Uh, do I want, this is even Steven, gives you a bonus for playing even cards. I think I'm gonna pass on that. Uh, because I'm, you know, trying, I'm still trying to do this straight flush thing. Maybe, maybe we gotta give up on the straight flush thing. Uh, maybe what we've gotta do, you know, if we're going into the next ante here, this is 11,000, this is actually less than the boss that we just beat. So I don't need the scoring help right away. You know, it'd be nice if we could get it, but I don't need it necessarily. So I'll wait to reroll until the next drop. So you do, every time you reroll, it costs more and more money. So it is better to spread out your rerolls as much as possible rather than rerolling a bunch in one shop. So we'll do one reroll here, another reroll in the future, and then you know, kind of spread them out that way. Um, I could be, you know, if I was worried about the scoring, I could replace the drunkard with this uh, misprint joker. I could replace the seance plus 10 molt with this misprint joker. Um, I think this is gonna be more consistent, the plus 10 here. And I think the extra discard has been helping us make our hands. Uh, once again, coupon tag, you know, giving us about $15 worth of value. Um, I'm going to play instead of skip because I want the extra booster packs. What I'm looking for mainly are tarot cards from Arcana packs so that I can manipulate my deck more than I have already. All right, here we're looking at 
If I want to make my straight flush, I'm gonna do this. And so this is what I was talking about, put the blue seal on the queen, put the uh, gold on the 10, because in going for my straight flush, these are the cards that I wanna hold on to. These are the cards that I wanna not discard. So those are the cards that I want to make special. Uh, we could go eight and nine, or you know, if I just get the eight and nine, I don't need the seven. So let's do this. We've got the ace, leaving us open to drawing the king. Sure. All right, uh, we can get either the nine or the king. So let's do that. All right, we didn't get there. Uh, I want to avoid playing a flush because a flush will reset my obelisk. So what can we possibly play instead? You know, full house will work. That's what we played last time. We got 11,000 points for a full house. Um, I could... So if I want to go for my straight flush, my straight flush looks like this. Here's discard three, get either a nine or a king. There's one king and two nines, so three outs. Or if I do this, I've got no more tens actually, and I've got one more queen actually. So let's keep going. I don't have a straight, otherwise I would play a straight. Let's keep going for the straight flush. Uh, with only 20, or with only three cards here and 24 in the deck, good chance that we don't get it. Good chance we don't get it. Interesting, we got some jacks here. All right, this is it. We did it. Lucky, always lucky. Risky, on purpose. Ah, shoot. I did all that work to get the straight flush so that I could get a spectral card, and then I forgot that, you know, I forgot to make room. Boo. Oh well. Well, what we can do now, this, uh, you know, runner up to 60 chips now. That's already more than what we had for the blue jugger. It's not super high. 60 chips is not insane, but you know, it is more. Um, we have temperance giving us $28 here. The extra value is partially coming from, we had that gift card for a while. And so like, you know, here, this is $8 obelisk and $6 lusty joker. And so the temperance here, huge chunk of money, which means, we have money to spend. We can open these booster packs. I'm not looking for value necessarily. I just have extra money. So I might as well spend the money that I have. Um, I, if it's not hearts, you know, we've already demonstrated we have kind of hard enough time getting our straight flushes. So let's skip it if it's not hearts. Ooh, I am tempted though, you know, with this queen of spades here being polychrome, even though it's not hearts, it is fancy. Let's take it. You know, I can always make it into hearts, right? So I have the money. Let's do a re-roll here. Um, this sigil, I'm going to replace with this mercury. And again, that's this uh, mechanic of blocking duplicates. So when I reroll, I'm not gonna see these duplicates. Maybe I'll try to get some other planet cards. Here we've got some more scoring options here. I think we're done with Seance. I think Seance has proven to be too risky, too risky to get our straight flushes online. Maybe we'll start going for something else. Flush houses seem to be coming to us relatively easily. So if I'm going for flush houses, if I'm getting rid of the Seance, uh, what am I replacing it with? Uh, this is one option. The fist will give you, you know, between uh, 10 and 15 molt or something like that. 
Um, I think we can do better. I am going to, like I said, because I have the money, I'm going to roll one more time. Plus 12 here is not that much better than the plus 10 that we're getting from the holographic. Polychrome, and it's plus 10 for flushes. This is the droll joker. I am gonna take that. What am I gonna get rid of? I'm gonna get rid of the drunkard. So drunkard, give me the extra discard, give me the extra consistency versus the extra scoring uh, when I do get the one hand. Straight flush is, we needed the extra consistency for uh, flush houses. We probably don't need the extra discard. So I feel fine swapping in this droll joker. Notably here with the polychrome effect, that happens after the joker effect. So this will be plus 10 and then times 1.5 and then times whatever stuff the obelisk is doing. And then that's fine. We can go ahead and move on to the next round. $23 for all the hands played. That's kind of a big deal. Am I going to be able to get this 20,000 points? Absolutely. $20, I will take it. That's more than, you know, whatever value we're generating up here. All right, we did get the fancy queen. So if we wanted to, we could do like a full house here. We do not get the plus 10 from our droll, droll joker. So maybe let's still try to play, um, you know, some kind of fancy flush. Though I will say, if we don't get the flush house, if we just get a regular flush, we lose all of the work that we've done on the obelisk if we play that flush. So we are taking on a little bit of risk there and we aren't able to grow our runner anymore if we're not playing flush or straight flushes. That's okay, we'll replace the runner with something better anyway. Show me more tens and queens, of which we have three queens of hearts, that wild queen of diamonds, and then so on. Plenty of queens, let's do it. We got the 10 already. Because this is gold, I don't want to discard it. And there we go. That's our flush house. Uh, you know, since we have the extra discard, we might as well do this. If I get a jack, then I won't have to use my 10. Or if I get another 10. There we go. So, you know, the reason why I put the gold on the 10 here is you hold it and then in an emergency you use it, but you might not need to. And so it's fine to put it on that as long as you have backups. All right, note here, we got 50,000, 50,000 for a flush house. And potentially more when we upgrade it with the series card. As a backup, let's say we don't get our flush house. Do we want to do Mars? Yeah, I think we have the extra money. We can afford to have a backup hand. You know, let's say we get unlucky, we draw all of our queens instead. We'll do that as a backup. Uh, voucher here allows us to re-roll the boss if we get a bad boss that, you know, maybe debuffs all of our hearts. Um, without even looking at what the boss is, I am going to take the voucher. Uh, we can't see the next boss until we go to the next round. That's fine. Uh, we have money, so we'll go standard pack. Looking for more, mostly queens of hearts or other kind of uh, ten of hearts or jack of hearts. Those would be good in the arcana pack death would be cool or this polychrome queen into hearts with a sun an extra jack of hearts an extra nine of hearts this is going perfect just like we drew it up all right uh do we want to re-roll here we have the money might as well Extra hand size. This is similar to having an extra discard if you just have more cards in hand. When you discard, you can hold on to more cards at one time. So instead of holding on to four cards, you can hold on to five cards. Instead of discarding three cards at a time, you could discard four cards at a time. So extra hand size makes your discards more powerful. 
um, you know, making it more consistent to draw your good hand. And so I think what I want to do, you know, if we go to this flush house, flush house is already worth 180 chips and this runner giving us 60 chips is not that much more, you know, it's like 30% more or whatever. If we don't get our flush house, if we end up getting just a flush and set, we lose all the value from our obelisk. It is better to be more consistent. We just scored 50,000 points. I don't need this extra 30%. What I need is the consistency. So we'll go for the consistency now. And we'll, again, with the same kind of idea of spreading out our re-rolling money, I'm gonna save my money for the next shop. 50,000 is enough to beat these. Okay, against the boss here with no discards, potentially that extra hand size is going to help us. Uh, we do have the option, we could get a polychrome joker in the next shop. Notably, it'll be a random joker. So, you know, a lot of times you'll get uh, just a common joker. I think that's not something that I'm interested in doing right now. I think there are other options that we can get by just, you know, saving our money, getting the reward money, doing the re-rolls in the shop, potentially getting the Arcana packs to help manipulate our deck more. Our deck really needs uh, a little bit more tarot action. So we're gonna not take the skip. Looking for our queens and, you know, maybe jacks now we've done. Any kind of flush house. Uh, the two is not gonna make it happen. We've got jacks and queens developing here. We, that's our only five. We do have two nines or two jacks, or we've got a bunch of queens. Uh, I'm gonna throw the nine. I have enough here, we should get it. You've got the queen, it's polychrome. I am gonna discard one more time looking for my gold 10, or maybe if I get another queen, I won't have to use this blue seal card. For example, if I do that, you know, I could even, instead of, uh, you know, flush houses, I could play a flush five. I think that's something that I'm interested in doing. So something to consider. If I stick with just flush houses, then, you know, in, in the shop, you get whatever kind of planet cards. If we introduce another card here or another hand here, if we play the flush five, then the planet card that corresponds to the flush five, that will start showing up in the shop, which means all of the different planet cards, they occur less frequently if there's more of them, you know, kind of dilutes, you know, whatever kind of pool that we have of the celestial cards. And so, there is some consideration for if you've already done flush houses, stay on flush houses, don't go flush fives. Uh, if you can, skip directly to flush five and never play flush house, you know, if you wanna really maximize your chances of getting the right planet cards. So that's kind of one of the challenges with having all of these different hands is you've got all these different planet cards. Um, but, I think I'm gonna go for the flush five. I think that's in the future gonna give us more options. Like I said, for this uh, obelisk, we wanna have more different types of hands. So let's go for that. Let's go for the flush five. Also some consideration for, you know, if we don't use this queen, then this is gonna give us a random planet card. Um, most of the random planet cards, that's just gonna be you sell it for a dollar. So I don't feel that bad about playing it. Sixty-five thousand points for that. All right, a bunch of options here. Uh, ride the bus. It rewards you for not playing face cards since we're doing queens. You know that's an obvious one. We don't want to do that one. Uh, the castle joker is going to reward you for what it does is it picks a suit, and then when you discard that suit, then you it gains chips and it starts stacking up chips. Um, this can stack up very high, very fast early on if you get it. 
Um, but since it's kind of late now, it's anti-6, probably not going to get up that fast. Another thing that's kind of interesting about the castle is the way that it picks the suit is it picks a random card in your deck and it declares that that's the suit that it's going to use. So if your deck is mostly hearts, it will pick hearts more often. And then, you know, if you have a lot of hearts, you discard a lot of hearts and then it grows really fast. And so if my deck is 100% hearts, this will 100% 100 of the time always be hearts and then grow really, really fast. So there are situations where even if this shows up late, it could still grow really fast. But for us here, um, it's not going to do that. Um, I do want to, okay, I've got a celestial pack here. I'm going to try to maximize the opportunity to get, what is it? You know, either the flush five, that's an Eris planet card or a series for the flush house. So what does that look like? Um, one way to do that is I'm gonna sell these and I'm gonna, I should only sold one, um, but I'm gonna buy the priestess and I'm gonna reroll. I'm gonna reroll looking for more different planets. Uh, didn't show up there. Uh, I do have the strength though. So we'll talk about that in a sec. But what I was hoping to do is if I have these planets here and I have a planet in the shop after re-rolling, now this celestial pack, there's gonna be no duplicates, so it improves my chances of getting the one that I want. Uh, which I didn't, uh, flushes, never wanna play another flush, so we'll just do this, Uranus, and we get an unlock for that. Uh, before I open the Arcana pack, I am gonna pick up this strength card, because I might wanna use it after opening the Arcana pack. And in here, uh, if I want to play flush fives, what I really want to do is I want to turn my jacks into queens. I could also, you know, for these flush houses, turn my nines into tens. Um, this strength, I don't have to use it now. I can also wait and sort of save it for an emergency situation. Uh, some other consideration, we could do aces and sixes into hearts. Would I rather turn these cards into hearts or straight up remove them from the deck. These aces, gone. I think that's what I'm interested in doing. And then that way our deck is just a little bit more consistent. Uh, $6 here for another reroll. I'm gonna wait on that. Do I wanna swap some jokers here? I'm not trying to go for straight flushes, but there's always the chance that you sort of draw it naturally. So between this seance, always plus 10 molt, and this uh, mystic summit giving me sometimes plus 15 molt, I think I'd rather stick with the plus 10. And runner we said that we don't need anymore. Random uncommon joker. This is not as crazy as you might think. So a lot of the uncommon jokers are giving uh, X molt. This one happens to be rare, but a lot of the uncommon uh, jokers give you uh, times molt. That is gonna be much stronger than, you know, whatever plus molt that you're getting. You know, so if this lusty joker is already getting us up to, you know, let's see here, we've got uh, 16 plus another 20 is, this is 36 molt after this one, then an extra plus 10 is less than 30%. Whereas this times 1.5, that's 50%. And this times 2.8, that's, you know, 280% extra or whatever it is. And so if we get an uncommon joker that gives you X molt, that's gonna be huge. It's gonna be worth potentially getting rid of a uh, lusty joker, um, even though this is giving us 20. But I'm not gonna roll it, or I'm not gonna take the chance on that. I think we can get uncommons from just normal re-rolling. Uh, we got the queens. Looking for just more queens. Like that. Uh, I don't need the kings. I am gonna hold on to the 10. You know, I could throw the 10 uh, trying to get another queen, but I feel safe holding on to the 10. 
looking for this jack. Could be a queen with the strength card. So maybe I will hold on to the jack. Maybe what we can do, we can go jack into queen and we can go nine into a 10. And there we've got our flush five. Or if we want, we could play a flush house. Or we could play a four of a kind will also work. Four of a kind, if I wanna get the value from the drill joker, maybe I have to do it this way. Uh, I am gonna play the four of a kind. So I wanted to play the flush five before so that we could unlock the flush five so that we could start getting the flush five planet cards. But here I know I already have 30,000 points with just four of a kind. So I'll get my blue seal value. Notice here with the Droll Joker, we didn't need the plus 10, but uh, when we play four of a kind, the extra ace of hearts, that did count as containing a flush, even though it was counted as a four of a kind. All right, this Neptune powering up my straight flushes, um, I probably don't need, but you know I can use it anyway if I want. I think that's something that I'm interested in doing. The, this gives me 40 for each discard remaining. So if I, you know, don't have any, if I have four discards, that's 160 chips. Most of the time I'm discarding uh, at least two times, maybe more than that. So maybe this is not something that I'm interested in. Also the base chips for flush house and flush five are already 180 and 160. So maybe I don't need the extra chips here I'm not going to contribute that much before i open these i'm going to re-roll looking for another planet card there's that neptune again and so if i open these i know i'm not going to see another neptune card i will take it you know just a hedge here just so that we have options and i will take this temperance do I want to do a joker swap here? This is plus 15 molt all of the time instead of this seance here. Uh, I don't think that's necessary. Reroll one more time. Chariot is something that I'm interested in. So let's go ahead and open the celestial packs now. Uh, I don't think the order matters super much. Okay, between these, uh, we've got the flush house or the flush five. Uh, I'm just gonna make the bigger one bigger. And between these, again, we'll go for the biggest one, that's the flush house. And replace the, this doesn't matter super much, but I do wanna have the chariot. We rerolled twice, we'll save our money for the next shop. All right, can we beat this boss with no discards? Meaning I'm using my hands in place of my discards. Can I do this with just Basically just two discards, two hands. Um, probably, probably we could, it's risky. I don't feel super confident about that necessarily because, you know, if we play a flush, we lose all of this obelisk value. So what I'm going to do is I'll use the reroll. There are worse things that we can get, but I think we can get something better than this. Play only one hand type, that I can do. I can definitely win in one. So discard, if it's not a heart, it has to go. Uh, this is great to see here. We've got a pair of eights already and we know we can get uh, a bunch of queens very easily. So if I discard here, the eights and the yeah, show me the queen. All right, five cards. Uh, if we don't get the queen, I think we die. Is that true? We also have a jack. We have seven out of 28 cards and we've got five chances. 
like that. There's a bunch of queens. We could even make it a regular five of a kind. That would also work. We could go four of a kind. That would work. We could go, you know, this weird flush house here if we want. Um, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to play the flush house so that I have the opportunity to make this queen into steel. Um, another reason to... I should have made the polychrome one into steel. Um, and the reasoning behind that is, you know, you get these tarot cards, the death tarot cards, where you can copy cards. And so by stacking more enhancements on one card, then you get more value out of your copies. Though I will say, you know, the death card is only one of the 22 possible tarot cards that you can get. So maybe it doesn't matter super much. Polychrome you want to play, steel you want to hold in hand, so there is some tension there. Um, I feel fine separating these. And then that's an easy 150,000 points. Uh, notably here we did have the steel effect and we did have the polychrome effect and those two things combined are about two times. So without those, this would be maybe 170, or this would be 70,000 instead of 150,000. Keep that in mind. This gives us playing cards in the shop. I will point out these. So standard packs, you get sort of randomized playing cards. Sometimes they have enhancements, sometimes not. These playing cards from the Magic Hat are not enhanced in any way, never enhanced. The upgraded voucher does give you enhancements, but this baseline one does not. And so this is not something that I want, you know, to replace jokers in the slot in the shop with playing cards instead. Um, I will take it for the unlock. You know, it's not discovered here. I want to get the collection unlock, um, but it is not optimal. This is not something that you normally want to be taking. There could be rare circumstances where you want it, but most of the time you don't want it. Uh, I probably should have waited, you know, wait uh, until after the next couple rounds to buy it, but oh well. The Arcana pack here, standard pack, doesn't really matter. I'm looking for more hearts. Four of hearts. I don't think we need Arcana pack. Okay, we could uh, bonus cards for more scoring. We could go wild card on the jack, making it easier to get our flush house or potentially our flush five. Uh, I think we're good. I think we don't need the wild card, so I'm going to take the lucky card instead. And if I'm going to do a lucky card, might as well be a queen. Those are the cards that I plan on playing. We'll take the Jupiter and I will reroll once. Do I want reserved parking for money? Mm, maybe it's too late for money. Maybe it's not too late for money. Maybe we have enough scoring if I get rid of this Lusty Joker or get rid of the Seance or get rid of this Juggler. Nah, that's okay. Uh, we do have an option here for a glass card, and so this is, you know, if we were kind of desperate, if we needed the scoring, we could uh, use a glass card to improve our scoring. It does have the chance of breaking, but, you know, maybe we just save it for the boss. Uh, we're in anti-7 now, so we've got the two bosses left, anti-7 boss, anti-8 boss, and so I don't need it to survive for very long, necessarily, this glass card. So that's an option. Let's do that. And we'll just kind of hold on to this for the future. 15 bucks here. Um, I think I'd rather have access to the shop. You know, access to all kinds of... Uh, you know, you can re-roll for jokers, but you can't re-roll for booster packs. And so uh, I'm not going to take this. Uh, here, Garbage Hat gave me $13 also. I'm not going to take that one. All right, let's 
find our flush house or even you know we got the nine ten king maybe we could finally get that straight flush it, that's still on the table technically you know here's our straight flush and if we do that we should get rid of this jupiter card and if we do that is it going to score thirty-five thousand points it will so do we want to be discarding and looking for our gold card? Yes. Gold card? Uh, I'll take the queen. Uh, this will give me a planet card. This will give me a spectra card. I'll be sort of overloaded, maybe. Uh, I'll... I'll think about it. We'll think about it. Uh, but I do want that 10 gold 10. All right, we didn't get the gold 10, but plenty of scoring. Oops. So, you know, like I said, without the steel card, without the polychrome card, you know, in the 80, 90,000 range. So we know we can beat the boss with that one hand. All right, here's interesting. Uh, the fortune teller gives you molt for all of your tarot cards that you've used. And it is retroactive, so it counts back all of the tarot cards that you've used. And so if this lusty joker is giving us, uh, you know, molt for each of our hearts, this is at most going to be 20. So this 20, you know, already beats that. However, Something to keep in mind, this steel card happens after your cards are scored, but before your other jokers are scored. So the lusty joker gives you the plus four multi on each card as it's being played, but this happens before your other jokers. Also this polychrome happens before your other jokers. And so if these together give me times two, to the molt that I get from this Lusty Joker, that's actually worth more than what this uh, fortune teller would be doing. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, I will say that this fortune teller is definitely worth more than this seance. You know, I know I just did the thing with, uh, you know, I got an extra spectral card and the spectral card that I got, I didn't actually want anyway. I'll probably gonna sell it. So let's go ahead and pick up the fortune teller. Also, it's a new unlock for us. Uh, I should have done this first. I should have gotten the judgment before I bought the fortune teller. Oh, well, that's fine. And then here, like I said, with that magic hat, this could have been something else, but it's just a plain playing card. They're all plain. But I guess if I saw a queen of hearts in the shop, I wouldn't be too upset about picking up an extra queen of hearts. Before I open these Celestial Packs, okay, this is going to be $10, taking me down to $36. I will reroll once, and then open these Celestial Packs. Uh, I guess Neptune for the Straight Flush. You know, we got a bunch of points for the Straight Flush there. We're happy that we upgraded the Straight Flush earlier on. You know, I said we were hedging when we picked up those Neptune cards, and it paid off that investment. Same thing with this Mars here. You know, by leveling up the four of a kind, we we're able to play that sort of a backup hand the one time. Uh, this splash here allows you to, if you play cards that are only, or hands that are only three of a kind, or, you know, maybe a pair, this allows you to score extra cards, even though they don't contribute normally to your hand. Since we're already playing five cards, we don't need this. Supernova gives us Molt for playing the same hand repeatedly. With Obelisk, we're trying to do the opposite. We're trying to spread out our different hands here. So uh, Supernova, not going to help us. And even normally, even if you're normally playing, and I want to try to play as many flushes as I can, you know, if we look at all of these hands that we've played, we've played maybe 20 hands total. And so if we got plus 20 from playing 20 flushes, that's still, you know, about the same as this fortune teller, which is easier to level up. That's still about the same as this lusty joker. And so, you know, maybe 
even though this can technically scale to infinity, you know, you keep playing more and more poker hands, it keeps getting bigger and bigger, you're limited in how many poker hands you can actually play. So maybe this doesn't get as big as you might think it does. So uh, I wouldn't take this early in a run, even though it can keep growing and keep scaling. Um, I might take it late in a run if maybe I have pairs or high card and I've played a lot of two pair or something like that. Uh, I will take this Wheel of Fortune just because we have the extra money. And that counts as a tarot card for our fortune teller. All right, going into the next round, uh, any kind of flush variant, if it's a straight flush, flush house, flush five, four of a kind, all of those will win. So let's just look for our hearts. Maybe a flush house. I like that. Flush house. Maybe I can get my blue seal queen. Maybe. If not, now I am going to use the glass card. So while we're holding on to this justice card, um, I'm not able to get a duplicate. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use it now. And then that opens up the opportunity to get another one later. And I'm using it now because I don't need to play the glass card. I'm gonna save that for later. And we can see here this flush house, you know, worth about 100,000 points. We unlocked the voucher. That voucher unlocked is uh, the voucher that gives you extra interest. And the way that you unlock it is by having maxed out interest for, uh, I think it's 10 rounds or something like that. And so that's what we've done. We've maintained max interest here. All right, in the Celestial Pack, uh, we've got the Flush House. Next Celestial Pack, we've got... Uh, Maybe four of a kind is the best one instead of full house. You know, if we get those four queens. Uh, do we want to do any of this nonsense here? You know, it gives us a, a bonus if we don't have any red cards in hand. Uh, this blackboard is what it's called. It's not going to help us. Uh, I do want to save my money for interest. Uh, for this boss here, so the way this works is... When you discard, regardless of how many, you draw three. So if you discard five cards, you draw three cards. If you discard one card, you also draw three cards. This is the same as if you play one card, you draw three cards. And so this can be sometimes a benefit or sometimes, you know, if you got to discard five, you only draw three. It's a, a detriment. So this is kind of a weird one. It's, I, I kind of like this one a lot, the serpent. Uh, I'm not going to re-roll it. I think we'll do just fine. If I discard this three, I'll draw three more. If I discard this six, and this seven, and this four, if I want, I could play an ace and draw three more cards. Uh, I didn't even look at the cards. What are the cards? We've got 10, nine, eight, seven, six. If I wanna play a straight flush, I could even play five through nine, keeping the tens. I could play a flush house if I felt, you know, I needed a flush house. Uh, I'm going to play the straight flush because I want to try to get the money from this gold card because we've done, we put in the legwork, we upgraded our straight flush earlier. This should be 70,000. That was the thing that I unlocked. Oh well. All right, uh, let's see here. Jokers, again, this misprint giving us a flat mult bonus. It is less than the fortune teller, it's less than the lusty joker. I'm using the extra hand size for me to find my hands. So I don't want that. Uh, this is kind of interesting. The burglar gives me extra hands instead of discards. And so normally it's three hands or three discards turns into three hands. 
And so if you have extra hands, then you could get extra money. And so I typically, I think of the burglar as like a extra income joker. You know, if you have more hands, you get more money from hands left over. For things like the obelisk, you know, this gives you a reward for playing hands. And so if I have more hands, then I can grow my obelisk better. So, you know, there's some synergy there. Uh, for us on the red deck here, we have four discards instead of a baseline three discards. And so we're giving up more. Um, I think I'm, I don't think it's optimal to take the burglar. Um, you also run into this issue of uh, with the obelisk, if we play the flush, we lose it. That's it. So, you know, if we're not able to discard, if all of our cards are red and we have to play a hand, then we're not able to play those red cards. We're not able to play those hearts. But because this is a new unlock for us, I am going to take it. And I think, you know, of these that I want to sell here, I'm going to sell the juggler. That does hurt our ability to find our cards, but I think we have enough queens of hearts. We have enough backups, you know, for the flush house, jacks and tens. Uh, we should be fine. I'm going to take the misprint joker just for the unlock and then the burglar. So again here, I don't think this is the optimal pick, but I'm going to pick up the burglar just for the unlock and the celestial pack. In the celestial pack, you know, maybe straight flush without the help of the, uh, what is it, the juggler. Uh, I'm not planning on playing more flush houses or uh, straight flushes, but you never know. Uh, let's see here. Between these, maybe I want the standard pack. I could get another 10 of hearts as another option for my make my flush house a little bit easier i don't think that's crazy to want to do that i don't think it's necessary to do that but i don't think it's crazy to do that let's skip it i want to try to get as many queens as i can let's just focus on the queens the uh flush five Save our money for interest. The juggle tag gives us extra hand size in the next round. And so if I wanted to, I could skip all the way to the final boss. Uh, and so, you know, this is just the next round, right? So if I skip this, then in this next round, uh, I don't have that. Or I have the bonus for this big blind, but I wouldn't have it for the boss. But what you can do is you can actually skip both of these. And... We would also get here a standard pack giving us, uh, you know, cards or whatever. I'm going to say this run is probably done. We're probably good. Uh, we can probably beat this final boss. This 100,000 is completely doable. And so I think we'll do that. You know, we've already been going at this for quite a while. So we'll just skip here, skip here, go straight to the boss. Ooh, we even get Queen of Hearts is all we need from that standard pack. Uh, I do, you know, there are some unlocks for going into uh, endless mode. After we beat this, you know, quote unquote final boss, we can keep going anti 10 or 9, 10, 11, 12. There's an unlock for reaching uh, anti 12 in endless mode. I will do that in a future run on a different deck. I don't feel super strongly about this build here. All right, so one of the fun things about, you know, the Amber Acorn, this is one of the bosses that's new, not in the uh, demo versions. Uh, turns your Joker's upside down, but you can kind of sleuth it out. You can try to figure out what they are. So like, for example, this was my juggler that gave me, or sorry, my burglar that gave me the extra hands. Uh, what I want to try to do is whatever my X molt is, whatever my uh, obelisk is, I want to get the obelisk on the right side. So to figure out which one it is, I can queue up here. That's a high card. Let's play it. All right. So this 
was the fortune teller gave me the plus molt. This didn't trigger because I didn't have any hearts. So this is my lusty joker. This was the times 1.5. So this is the droll joker with the polychrome. And then this gave me the X molt. That was my obelisk. There we go. We figured it out. All right, what else are we trying to do here? We could, uh, here is a straight flush. I said I wasn't gonna do a straight flush, but here technically I can. That will definitely win. Is that the best I could do? My straight flush, because it's upgraded, is better than these other ones. You know, just for fun here at the end, uh, I will play the straight flush, because it's the best hand that I can do, but I'm gonna try to find my steel card and I'm gonna level up my obelisk just a little bit more. You know, since we got the burglar and we got all these extra hands, I might as well go big just for fun. So here, 10. I don't wanna play a flush, that would be bad. But I can play high card, no problem. I can, I'm gonna play the polychrome queen instead of the lucky one. King, queen, jack, 10, nine. So here's the rest of these. You know, we could do a two pair here. Shoot, that was worth a lot of points. You know, let's uh, try not to score too many points, but maybe here a pair will be fine. Give me that steel card. Yeah. All right, here it is. This is our Royal Flush with the Polychrome card. Polychrome card I'm gonna put on the right because our Lusty Joker is gonna give us all these plus fours. Polychrome happens after, and then the Steel card happens after that. Fire in the hole. All right, so that's gonna be our first win with the first deck, this red deck. Uh, the plan with this series, you know, the unlock everything series, um, it is gonna take a lot of time. So I'm not necessarily gonna show every run that I do, but I am gonna show, you know, what I feel is like enough. So you'll get to see all the decks, you'll get to see all the challenges, you'll get to see all the different stakes, levels, and that kind of stuff, even if I don't show every run. Um, and you know, so that I don't lose my mind, I'll try to keep this somewhat educational. I'll use this as a teaching opportunity as well. All right, I'll see you in the next one.